Okay, I guess we're good to go. So I'm going to call the select board meeting of Tuesday, November 27th to order. And the first item is approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Do we have any amendments requested? Okay. And we do not have an executive session, correct, Kathleen? Okay. All in favor of approval of the agenda as submitted, signify by saying aye. <coughs> aye. aye. Those uh, um, approval of the minutes is the next uh, so November 13th regular business meeting minutes. <coughs> Victor moved, I'll second. Okay, moved and seconded. Now I wasn't here, so I didn't uh, know if there were any changes anybody wants to make to those. I didn't catch anything. Didn't catch anything? Okay, so all those who want to approve the minutes as submitted, signify by saying aye. 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 And one abstention. Um, <clears throat> first item on the agenda of, of, of uh, work is the citizen comments. And I, I know that it's going to be uh, um, an opportunity. Uh, the, in the paper, there was uh, published that, that uh, tonight we would hear comments on um, the parks design and I know I see at least one person who's here to to enter comments for the parks I thought this would be a time that we that anybody who's here for that we would we would entertain that at this time and um, just so that those who are watching understand the process that we're going through we've had the two meetings the one in I believe it was June and then one in September <coughs> and then the select board meeting on November 13th um, and we're doing uh, the Planning uh, Commission and the Design Advisory Council are having a joint meeting on Thursday uh, that has been warned. And we will have another uh, meeting, a public input session um, on uh, December 5th in the evening. And then on December 11th, we hope to have some near final drawings, final drawings, uh, dependent upon um, if there's um, significant differences in opinions, but uh, at least one or two drawings for the select board to uh, take up seriously looking at, at approving them to go forward at that time. And so um, that's what, we, what we're looking at for a process. Um, but knowing that uh, I, I recognize at least one friend of the community who's here uh, and has some some comments to enter, I believe. Faith? May I come forward? Uh, please, so that they, because uh, the minutes are transcribed from the film. And so if you get your, uh, whatever you say on, on the mic, if you can get to the mic close enough. Well, actually, they'll be much more brief than you realize. Okay, that's I'm fine. Faith Terry, a resident of Middlebury, and I'm a Jane come lately to this process, but I'm an enthusiast of the process that's been followed. I responded particularly to the article in the paper, uh, but now having listened to what you have said just a moment ago, I realize there are additional avenues within which I can submit any observations or recommendations I might make um, with regard to the post-construction uh, site restorations. So uh, if it's appropriate, but rather than take up your time now, it's so totally up to you. Um, because I don't know how to say anything too briefly, <laughs> is that I could just submit it, and then uh, it could be forwarded to all of you and to the um, uh, Planning Commission and the Design Advisory Committee. So it's, it's really at your pleasure. Uh, that, that would be fine, Faith. I, I think making sure that, that that's introduced at the time when the design mm -hmm. um, advisory committee is looking at it, yeah. would, as opposed to waiting till the 5th, would probably be beneficial. Yeah. Um, since you've given a lot of time and, and effort to, to providing some input to that. So so what would your recommendation be? Uh, if Do you have copies? That I have two copies, and I would apologize because I don't have the greatest copier, but I can give to one to each of you. And if if you could okay? give one to uh, myself, one to Kathleen, and, and we'll make sure and they get to... I can also email, and then you can print it better. <laughs> that would be great, copy. and okay. we can get it to Jen and um, and introduce it that way. Great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, is there anyone else that is here for something that is not on the posted agenda? Okay. Um, next is uh, the Addison County Bike Club, and I believe Asher Nelson uh, is carrying the torch uh, this evening. Yeah, I'm one of the torch carriers. One of the yeah, torch carriers. Bring all your torch carriers up. Come on up. Well, Angelo and Jamie, Nancy's here as well. It, it's, Alan. we've all read all of the letters of support and uh, it, it, it's uh, always exciting when there's that much energy behind any activity, so. Yeah, I mean, one of the great surprises to us, we started, this was a little bit of an ad hoc effort um, spurred on by a meeting that Angelo had to say what he, he thought we had some money a, a few months ago and said what can we do with this idea that's been percolating for a while about a connection a recreation connection or a path or commuter path from East Middlebury came up and um, it really lit fires you can guys can see from the support we just emailed some folks last week saying what do you think should we chase this there's a the opportunity we're looking at is a Borek it's a Vermont outdoor recreation uh, economy grant yeah. I know you know the full name of it. Sure do. Um, so sort of in very short notice, we're trying to put together a grant application, which requires the town to be sort of the grantee. Uh, is that right? Yes, grantee, um, which is why we're sitting here in front of you. And we have done this process once before with the town forest planning. I don't know if any of you recall that we were here in front of you a year and a half ago. It's asking been a little you. bit. <laughs> so, and that process is just getting into the final reporting in January. Went to the workshop for that at the uh, in November, in early November. So that's kind of coming to a close. There will be a report issue. Hi, Jen. Yeah, hey, speak of the devil. Oh, you were not. <laughs> <laughs> or no, speak and of she'll the. She'll appear. <laughs> uh, so we are here to sort of talk a little bit about this idea of a recreation path between Middlebury and East Middlebury and then hopefully gain your support in chasing a grant opportunity. Okay. So. Sure. My name is Eric Berg. I'm uh, on the Addison County Bike Club uh, board. Hi, Eric. With Azure. Yeah. Good to see you. So uh, do you, do you want to just kind of give a general overview of, of what you're thinking as far as the path so that all the board sure. is on the same page? Um, well, first off, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate you. Um, listen to this proposal. Um, so as County Bike Club is really, I think, we've semi-spearheaded this along with MALT. Uh, and just to let you know, Addison County Bike Club is a new, is a relatively new chapter of the Vermont Mountain Bike Association. Uh, we represent about 150 mountain bike riders in Addison County. And our goal is to promote sustainable and responsible mountain bike access. And as uh, Azure highlighted, this kind of came as a kind of wing in it and that uh, when it when the idea was thrown out there it, was, it immediately had a lot of enthusiasm so it's it's something that a lot of people have been thinking about in the back of their head as to um, you know send out the tentacles of the of the, uh, the trail system in Middlebury so in terms of the design of the trail the purpose is a multi-use uh, trail that would be connecting down to the the malt the, the TAM system to the sidewalk system of East Middlebury. Um, the idea is a moderate to easy skill level, so relatively flat and about a four foot wide gravel path. So it would be a, um, the idea is to encourage family cycling opportunities because there's plenty of like um, advanced rider opportunities in the area. Um, so it would promote uh, family cycling, beginner cycling, and also uh, as a safe route to encourage commuting between the two towns. Uh, it would be, the idea would be uh, relatively easy and efficient, so to avoid the Route 7, uh, 116 corridors. Um, and then in terms of advanced mountain bikers, uh, the reason that ACBC is so enthused is because it would connect um, the town forest parcels that have advanced mountain biking uh, opportunities to, it would an efficient link over to the Musilamu, where there's uh, epic rides that are considered some of the top rides in the United States for mountain biking. So it just, from our perspective, it just it's very logical to connect the two. Yeah. And it's part of a, actually a movement in outdoor recreation 
of connectivity. And some of you may have heard of the Bela Mont Trail or some of these other, there's the Cross Vermont Trail. So there's trails are both for winter use and for summer use in biking or hiking. Um, there's the North Country Trail that um, Malt's been working on for a while, which is, has worked its way from, I guess, from the Adirondacks. It started in Montana and it's <coughs> gone as far as the Adirondacks with a yeah. short gap and then going over to the East Coast. Yeah, and so there's already an official connection from Snake Mount to Middlebury, and this would actually help connect to Moose Lumu and beyond for that trail. So um, you guys probably are like, well, where's this trail going to go? And part of the reason we're going to chase the grant is because we need to put some time in planning and doing some landowner contact. If anyone remembers the process of putting the TAM together, uh, that was a long, uh, deliberate process where, you know, at that point it was Mal and Amy was leading that process. Um, but you have to go out and talk to landowners and figure out um, what their concerns are and address their concerns and work with landowners before you can say, oh yeah, this is the route, you know. I think we've thought of several route options, and Malt has actually done some work with landowners to, with us, to have a spur south out of Murdoch Woods, which is behind the middle school. Um, so one option that would be obvious would be to go west of Route 7, and then at some point cross Route 7 and go into East Middlebury Village. Other options may include the east side and maybe hooking up with Boardman Street. Um, a lot of work to be done, but that's actually what we want to use some of this funding for. Uh, the grant also requires is beyond planning. You can't just say, well, we don't want to use uh, the, the state money for planning only. We have to actually use some of it for implementation. And that's where the piece that Mall Authority has some uh, easements in place for work south of Murdoch Woods, where we could actually use some of the money for uh, implementation and not solely planning. But the bulk of the work we need to do right now is planning. Um, and I would say also that I think this idea, based on the support we've had, has gained legs, and we will probably pursue it whether we get this grant or not. I think it's a really solid idea. Um, you know, so we're sort of here at the last minute saying, can you help us chase this grant, or the town would need to be the signatory on the grant. But um, you know, I think this idea, we will continue to pursue whether we get the grant or not. And the, we should state that the grant will be highly competitive in the state of Vermont. We know of many other communities that are chasing this opportunity and there's a limit. <coughs> I think there's $100,000 available and they aren't clear whether they're going to give it as one grant or multiple grants at 10000 or 20 grants at five. There's no data on that. And, uh, mm -hmm. So we have to, part of our strategy would be like, how much are we going to ask for? You ask for too much and maybe they're going to say no. If you ask for a moderate amount, maybe you have a better chance. So we haven't exactly figured the grant amount out yet. So, Heather? Is there any kind of match required from the town? Any kind of? Okay. Yeah, I did, uh, no match. Yeah. Other questions? What about local fundraising? I mean, I think it's a great idea, but. I'm and, certainly and I want, certain we're going to do local fundraising uh, on yeah. the way here. Well, I would yeah. think so at some point. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a good idea, and I think um, the public would. Well, I think we'd all benefit from it, so it's not something, you know. Yeah. It, uh, um, I, go, I go back to the diversity of support we got, which was yeah. amazing by sending out one email. Yeah. We got yeah. nine or ten letters saying, yeah. what a great idea. I'm wondering why only a four-foot, maybe six-foot I mean, I'm, I'm path. I'm, I'm just well, wondering. Four foot's easier than six feet. It's uh, definitely well, I harder than two it's... feet. Uh, that would, I think, just kind of be comfortable for the beginner cyclist, especially a little child, kind of wobbling back and forth, uh -huh. not making not making it terribly tight in between, but also not so wide that you could have easy ATV access. We need to um, allow commuters to overtake each other, or any bicyclists to overtake each other. Maybe parents to ride next to children as well. So. Mm -hmm. For reference, a typical mountain bike track is about 18 inches wide. You know, so this is, I, I would say we're not settled, but it would yeah. be four to five feet is probably a better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Some sections might be three feet. You don't want it to look like a road lane, which starts to get up at eight right. feet or better. So. Nick? So I think I heard the answer to this, but this would <coughs> essentially be part of that North Country Trail as well? 
Um, eventually it will most likely be, but we're not pursuing the trail as a section of the North Country Trail, uh, mostly because uh, I believe, and Jamie can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think if we um, try to get funding uh, through the North Country Trail and establish that, it would be a hiking trail only and off limits to bikes. But if we establish even just the route on a map and say that this is going to be a bike <coughs> path, then the North Country Trail will Am I, am I on target? Right on. Okay. So the MPS criteria is exclusively a hiking trail? For to use federal dollars to create new trails, yes. Okay. But they will utilize existing trail that's made for other uses. I understand. Okay, perfect. As a connector. Yeah. Okay, good. So and that's understand. probably a reason why this is um, important to do first, if that's one of the main motivations of that connection between East, East Middlebury and Middlebury. If it were only a walking path that we built with North Country Trail funds, mm -hmm. that would eliminate that. Okay, I understand. Thank you. And just for example, the Oak Ridge Trail mm -hmm. uh, in Musulamu is a designated mountain bike trail built by the National Forest Service. Right, Forest Service. And that is uh, a segment of the North Country Trail to connect up eventually to um, the, the Long Trail. Okay, good. And whereabouts is this Oak Ridge Trail? Right off of 125, just above the hill there, the first hill. It's almost where. Upper Plains Road leaves 125. Okay, yeah, if you yeah, go sure. about 100 yards past Just that, there's a little parking on your right. Okay. And that okay. connects from there to downtown here. Well, this no. trail we're, uh, we're pushing right now would disconnect to East Middlebury. East Middlebury. Okay. You could ride the sidewalks through East Middlebury, either ride up Sand yep. Hill, or there are actually plenty of four wheeler trails. Yeah, you know, there are other steps mm -hmm. to physically connect, but you're getting within a quarter mile of road riding. Mm -hmm. on I missed one key part too, which is Amy apologized she can't be here tonight. She's the one who got this on the agenda and she's part of this effort. Um, she has like four meetings for Act 250 around the state. She's running the Act 250 commission and she just, just kind of tapped out and couldn't make it. So she definitely apologized. She wanted me to stress that um, yeah, everyone she mentions this to in East Middlebury is excited about it because it can connect the village of East Middlebury more directly to Middlebury for recreation and for people who want to commute, you know, which is foundation of the idea. So, what's the downside? Is there a downside? Uh, time and energy for us, maybe. Um, you know, I guess when Malt proposed the TAM in the beginning, people thought it was actually going to be a negative. People were worried about what kind of behavior would be happening on that trail, but no one envisioned recreation as we know it today. Um, they didn't think about the runners and people who walk it and tam track and all the mountain bikers and stuff like that and you know the fundamentals of the Borac grant it's actually an economic development that's the reason they're um, granting this money they're trying to spur outdoor recreation <coughs> as an economic development opportunity and bring more people to our region um, different seasons and stuff so I don't know many downsides people are Healthier when they're out riding, walking, um, exercising. You know, if we have safer commuter routes. I don't want to <coughs> underscore or uh, you know, undersell that there's going to be a lot of work, and it will cost money. We'll probably have to chase some, do some fundraising because um, you know, four or five foot. It's just kind of like building a road. Still a lot of gravel. It's <laughs> a lot of gravel and fabric, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Um, so, does anybody have the opposition to it? No. Can we uh, move it then? May I add a comment before that? I just want to make sure that you understand that the municipality has to administer the grant if it's awarded. So we've been working out an agreement where we will work together to write the application. But once it's awarded, we can't administer the funds or all of those reporting procedures. So we're asking for your support, but also an avenue through which to administer this grant. And I just want to make sure that's clear, and Asher and Eric, you guys agree that that's an important part of this, right? Because we, we can't be, as nonprofits, we cannot administer this grant. Yeah, I think we do that fairly regularly. Right. Um, I think the way to go would be for the town to admit, actually cut the checks and report to the state, but if Malt could do all of the paperwork to support the invoices and all of the checking for their accuracy, that would work. Workable? <laughs> so we can talk about it as our group. Okay. 
Angela? I'd just like to make another comment. That there's, and I'm, I'm Angelo Lim, uh, representing the Moose and Moon Association, which administers the Moose and Moon National Recreation Area. That's Silver Lake in, in that region. 16,000 acres, 30 plus trails, miles of trails. And it's a great resource for the town. It's underutilized. And this connecting trail that leads right up there will get more people out using that area. becomes more of a gateway to that huge resource. It's a beautiful resource out there. It's, it's part of the Robert Frost interpretive signage trail all the way over to Blueberry Hill and almost to 73. It's a big area that Silver Lake can Falls along us. Those are the places people mostly know. Mm -hmm. But it's a great resource, and there's a lot of mountain biking, as Eric said, some fabulous mountain biking. And this is just a trail that gets you from town to that area. And also, just just to note that these trails, these off-road trails, are increasingly important because of the distraction of cell phones and everything else. It's uh, you know any pathway like Stowe has or in Burlington has. They're hugely popular big economic drivers. Uh, and this is a great <coughs> natural area for biking, road biking and mountain biking. So it's, it, I see there's a lot of <coughs> economic upside for the town in the long run. Well, we're all expecting you to use your platform to help with the fundraising. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'll awesome. make a motion to endorse the submission of a grant application with Middlebury as the sponsoring municipality under the 2018-19 Vermont Outdoor Recreation Collaborative Pilot Community Grant Program for planning and construction of a multi-purpose trail connecting downtown Middlebury to the East Middlebury Village. Second. Moved and seconded. Any final questions? Hearing none. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Thank you for your efforts. Thank you, Thank you very much for your well, time. Yeah. Let's Can I add one more piece to this? Um, in both the town forest planning effort and in this effort, it's apparent that there's a lot of different groups, nonprofit, town, otherwise, working in this outdoor recreation space in our community. And um, there's probably a need for some sort of restructuring or some sort of steering committee. We, Jen and Jamie and Eric and I have had a conversation about this. We'll probably need to have a conversation with Kathleen at some point. Um, some of you may have seen in some of those emails mentions that are we getting the cart before the horse we have done this sort of the planning around this um, I think the idea stands on its own but we'd also like to come back have the conversation with town staff and maybe come back and talk about what that looks like at some point too um, just because there's a lot of different carts going in different directions sometimes and I think it's important to get them all focused uh, a good comment and I, I did read the emails and I was thinking about how do we pull that all under our recreation hat so that everybody is at least working together. Um, we do have positions on that rec board, but maybe it would, it would necessitate that we change some of the direction of, of what their focus is so that it's a little bit more global of all the activities. Yeah. Uh, so. so another avenue where some work needs to be done. <laughs> yeah. Thank okay. you for your time. Thank right. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have a public hearing on the naming of the site of the former Lazarus Department store at the corner of Main Street and Printer's Alley, Lazarus Park. Uh, so tonight the board is conducting the public hearing to take comments on a citizen's petition first presented to the select board on October 9th in support of naming the site of the former Lazarus Department store at the corner of Main Street and Printer's Alley, currently owned by the town and to name it Lazarus Park. While the site is currently in use for the construction of the bridge and rail project, planning is underway for the development of a new park on the site when the project is completed in 2021. Several Middlebury residents have already submitted written comments regarding the proposal prior to tonight's meeting and the board looks forward to hearing thoughts on the subject in just a few moments. Before I open the floor for your comments, I'd like to remind you that because this is an official public hearing, if you would like to address the select board after you've been recognized, please come forward to the mic, sit in front of it, uh, and 
get where you can be heard by those that are on television as well as our recording for the minutes and accurately capture those in your comments in the minutes. With that, I'll open the public hearing and invite anyone who wishes to speak to um, raise your hand and be recognized. Nancy? Uh, Nancy Malcolm Middlebury. Um, first of all, I have very fond memories of Stan Lazarus. I chuckle thinking of my children playing Mr. Lazarus, trying on shoes after we've purchased shoes from him. And I know he has been or was uh, a, a very um, strong giving figure in this community. Uh, that said, I feel that it is um, dangerous to set a precedent to just start naming public spaces for people uh, that have been in this community, even though they are extremely dedicated and good citizens. I could come up with several other names right off the top of my head of others that would easily fulfill the same uh, slot if you were uh, to do so. I would request, what I'm requesting is that the um, select board instead give this to the policy committee and come up with a policy for actually naming public spaces in Middlebury instead of just going on the emotion and um, just the interest of a few people at a time. And this is by no means uh, a negative or anything on Mr. Lazarus, but I feel very strongly that it needs to be, you need, it needs to be stepped back and um, uh, made good, some, some criteria made on this. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Nancy. Yes, please. Uh, thank you. My name is Michael Olinick. I'm a Middlebury resident. Um, my wife spoke to the board uh, earlier uh, on this uh, question. Uh, she hoped to be here tonight, uh, but she has fallen victim to a nasty uh, virus. Um, I think it's fairly common around the country uh, to name uh, buildings and schools and streets and parks uh, after notable <coughs> figures who have contributed uh, to that community. Uh, we have a number of streets in our town that are named after town fathers and other leaders. We have the Mary Hogan School, which was uh, named after a longtime principal of our uh, elementary school. Uh, this particular site uh, of the park is actually where the Lazarus department store was located for many years. The Lazarus family over a very long period of 75 years or more uh, did a lot uh, for this town, uh, both publicly and, uh, and, and privately. Uh, both uh, two of the Lazarus brothers have uh, served uh, in our legislature and on our uh, town board of civil authority uh, for many years. It seemed very fitting uh, to name this park it, it, in their honor. Um, we picked up on, an, uh, on this idea from uh, Victor Nuovo, uh, who had written a piece for, for the Independent. Uh, we wrote to a few people uh, in, in Middlebury uh, asking for their reaction and if they were interested in supporting it. And we got unanimous support uh, from a whole lot of uh, uh, individuals. Uh, we aimed our little effort uh, at Middlebury residents, but turned out a number of people in adjoining towns uh, who knew the Lazarus as well, but were unlucky enough to have to live in a different community. Uh, also supporting it, and I believe that the petition that was delivered to the board had in excess of 100 signatures, we uh, could easily uh, have doubled or tripled that, uh, uh, that, that number. So. so I do hope that you will go forward uh, with this suggestion uh, to honor the Lazarus family. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. <coughs> Thank you. 
Any other comments? Laura. Yeah, I was gonna say something close to what Nancy said in terms of looking at precedent before making our decision. Um, so I think she already spoke to that, but I did consider that it's also historical because the Lazarus store was there, so you could come from that angle, like history, instead of naming it per se after a person, um, although we have both. And I recognize that there's just such wide support for this name that it's hard not to recognize it. And I think you know, it's, it's good for a policy committee to look at naming for the future. Um, although I think we could go down a rabbit hole with that because, you know, how would you decide um, on that? And to Michael's point, we already have a precedent of naming public um, places after people, sometimes, sometimes not. So you go through the process that we're going through already and we've, we've vetted this pretty thoroughly. So I, I think I'm prepared to make a decision. Yeah, I, I mean, I was just thinking, we have Seymour Street, um, which, by the way, was named after Hiroshio, Horatio Seymour, one of the founders of the Republican Party back when it used to be an anti-slavery party. Um, and uh, I think that, um, in other words, people come forward in, their, in, in the public memory as having contributed um, some significant things to the town. Uh, Stan, I think, has contributed um, not only to the economy of the town in the sense that uh, local retail is something that we uh, still desire. Um, was really an institution that the Lazarus family established in downtown Middlebury. And um, he also, I think, was a political leader in um, the transformation of the politics of the state of Vermont, um, uh, the, the chief assistant to uh, uh, Governor Phil Hoff, and um, uh, I think, a, a rather important figure. I'm not sure what a policy would be. I mean, it seems to me that you have people who make contributions to the town, to the state over time, and the name comes up perhaps after they're dead. Maybe you could have a policy that we <laughs> would not dedicate anything to a person who's still living. I don't know. I mean, whatever, whatever it may be. I say that because I'm nearing the end of my life. But I, I, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it, does, it does seem to me that um, there is an appropriateness about this and um, I'm not sure what a policy would be, uh, except that there are exceptional people who have made great contributions. And um, when there are places uh, that might have a name, um, uh, I think it's appropriate that, um, that we do it. And I, I agree with Laura, we've done it. And uh, yes, uh, I'm finished. <laughs> Someone else said. Fred. Fred. Fred, could you come forward? Just Fred Dunnington. Just reflecting on parks, park names and precedent, you got Batchel Woods, <coughs> Means Woods, Wright Park, <laughs> Stores Park, Jessica Swift Park, Harold Curtis Recreation Area in East Middlebury. You know, I wouldn't want to start on a slippery slope, but it, 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 there are a lot of parks that are named in Middlebury. In fact, there are more that are or a name than aren't. Mm -hmm. And I support this. You're not that near the end of life, but are you jockeying for a spot? <laughs> 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 you know, I, I, I hear Nancy's point, and I, I think it's well taken and, and could be something worth exploring. But um, as I think of who Stan Lazarus was, if we were to pick somebody who would likely pass muster in a, um, uh, on a policy, Stan would be one of those people. So um, while I hear it for the future, um, I can't think of another person offhand who's more worthy of this designation, so um, I concur with it. 
more. Just one more thing, because I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, Triangle Park, it's going to come, you know, like, and we're going to be looking at the name of that maybe, you know, like, and thinking, is that really what we want, you know, for the, for the future of that space? And that makes me think again about policy or just considerations. So, you know, do, again, I was thinking, is it, is it important to name the function of the park as part of the name? And I couldn't come up with an appropriate word for Lazarus Park. I, I just suggested theoretically Lazarus Information Park as an example of how you add an adjective that explains the function of the park. And I'm not saying we do it with Lazarus Park, but if we do look at Triangle Park, it might be an opportunity to think about that. You know, like what are the considerations for naming maybe that space going forward or other future spaces? And I think you go through a public process like we just did, you know, where people make a proposal and you vet it, and here we are. Please. May I just ask a question? I mean, in the context of that naming and the fact that it's adjacent to what you're calling Printer's Alley, mm -hmm. would not Printer's Alley be considered all-embracing as well? That's another, did you hear me, Victor? Yeah. Um, I just have asked that question. It's a little confusing in that the plan that's being presented mm -hmm. as um, the layout for the future of that area and of Triangle Park, yeah. there's Printer's Alley, but is Printer's Alley only the, the traffic, the only the roadway, or is it by necessity both? So, Well, I, I think you're raising another thing. It's like, what is the identity? Because now we have College Park by default because that's what it's called, because it doesn't really have a name, but it has that identity. And that area does have Printer's Alley as an identity, but there was so much of a, request for this name that we considered it. And in fact, we had one round where we were looking at renaming Printer's Alley, another name, and we, and we determined that you couldn't because it had a historical significance. Historical, yeah. um, so we kept it as Printer's Alley, but that's another good point. You know, so I think we, oh, we, we, have we had the opportunity to think about that. We're still, we like, have We have names of roads, Bakery Lane, for example, mm -hmm. because there was a bakery there, and, and uh, that's how it got named, so far as I understand. And I think that was the way of naming streets that led somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but um, I don't see that, uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> There's a difference between a park and an alley. Uh, I see them as two distinct things. And as far as the function of a park, I think parks have functions. Uh, uh, they, they do certain things. They're a place where people uh, can gather or sit uh, or pass through. Uh, uh, Children can play. I mean, they're, 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 they're also different parks have different functions. And uh, to, uh, uh, sure, we have a dog park that, that has a very specific function, and, and people use it only for that purpose. But public parks are there, and they, they, they are available for all sorts of activities, and I think that people with an imagination will figure that out. Uh, I think uh, uh, there's no need to just call it an information park. I don't know whether you would have to have some sort of, <coughs> I don't know, <laughs> some, 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 something by which people could get information. And I, uh, I would hope uh, that maybe a collection could be made and a, a plaque put there to indicate uh, who Stan Lazarus was and, and what stood there uh, in the past so that the, the history of the town would be um, accessible to, to people. Fred, question for you. Uh, all those Means Woods, tell all the different places you're talking about, were they all previously owned by the people who they were named after? as you think through those? Uh, well, I don't think Justice Swift Park ever owned a piece of land for Apollo, particularly. Yeah. Uh, 
I, I'm not sure, but in, that's in all cases, but um, mostly the ones that come to mind means but uh, Dwight Park was in reference. Uh, some of the uh, no connection with that one, that's going to the old Jackson. Uh, but he asked, he requested that name for the donation and the board agreed. Um, so I think it's gone both ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there any other? Y yes, please. Good evening. Good evening. Adam Ports, resident of Middlebury. Um, I didn't really actually come to talk on this subject, but hearing the discussion, I found it kind of interesting. Um, and I think if there's so much interest in the history of Lazarus and the name and what that place was, that that should really be carried into the design of the park more than just naming the park. And I don't think um, the current concepts that are in front of the town for that space really execute that well. Um, you know, Victor, you mentioned the idea of a plaque, which is a, you know, we see that in the College Park, a token to the history of, of that site and that building and using the bricks. Um, you know, are there features or the spirit of Lazarus that could be evoked out of design of the park that carry that forward more than just the name? So that's more of a provocative thought for, for you all to be thinking about, both from the design and the naming sense of it, but I think it has to be more than just the name. Thank you. Faith? But in terms of a planning process, you're, name, you're intending to name, perchance, a park before it's been created. And I would uh, urge you to go through the process and respect um, the design, excuse me, the planning commission and the design review board's um, conceptual analysis of what this park should be, and then come back to this naming of it once you understand what it looks like because this gentleman made an excellent point this i think is a bit of horse before the cart in this particular case okay is there any other public comments um, if not then i'm going to declare the public hearing close um, invite any other further thoughts from select board here i i think those last two comments actually spoke to me of what is the need for naming immediately we have this before us um, it's not going to go away and we're not going to put up a park sign or anything immediately and, and maybe through the process of all of this it'll become clearer that everybody's fine with it being Lazarus Park or maybe it's appropriate to be something else but I don't know, just a thought. Or there's an the, adjective. <laughs> just a thought. Uh, I, th I, think, I think the last two comments uh, spoke to me. Mm -hmm. I, I would agree that it's good to hold the discussion a little longer and that it was really useful to have the discussion we had. And, so, and, um, you know, and maybe it. maybe it should be considered as part of the planning as well, like the mm -hmm. gentleman said. If if it mm -hmm. if it truly is, what are the things that define that and, and should be incorporated in the design? So, just an idea. I'm okay with waiting. Is everybody okay with waiting? Yeah, yeah, I think I am. I mean, I I would be hard pressed <coughs> to imagine why I wouldn't endorse it later on. But if we want to wait for another couple of weeks or whatever during um, I think uh, we'll bring it back we'll like probably back. in a year. <laughs> what do you think it even needs to be that long? Uh, I think it will wait till the well, park we'll, is we'll fully see, designed. Let's, let's see how it shakes so, out. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. I, mean, I, 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 don't, I would vote for it right now, but I, I don't see a need to have that decision immediately yeah, if there are some other thoughts. Well, and I would hate to see it lost. Um, I don't think it's lost. I, I mean, I, I, I suppose the the motivation at least that I had um, and I think the petition that Michael brought was to remember a, an individual who has contributed a great deal to this town. Mm -hmm. um, I am skeptical about uh, 
w once you decided you're going to, to, to dedicate it to a certain person uh, uh, who has contributed both economically and also politically uh, to the town and the state, um, do you somehow design a park differently from the way you design a park? You have a certain geographical territory. Uh, one of the reasons why um, uh, it seems appropriate to name that uh, Lazarus Park was because that's where the Lazarus store used to be. Mm -hmm. And I would suppose that if you had a historical plaque, it would say that on this spot. Um, just as in the, um, the park uh, where the town, the old town offices used to be, there's, well, Cornerstone, the old Cornerstone, and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, these are uh, uh, sort of a way of, of, of keeping alive the historical memory. Uh, but I, I, I find um, both the discussion of a policy which seems to me incredibly vague and um, the, uh, the thought that somehow uh, you would design the park differently uh, when you know uh, who it's going to be dedicated to. I suppose that there might be, I mean, obviously, if you're going to provide information, that would be, that would be the case. Um, but I, uh, I mean, I'm not sure, uh, I, I, I understand the reluctance to name parks uh, or just go around just naming things for the sake of naming things. Uh, but I, I don't think that this is a, a frivolous uh, suggestion. So. Uh, I would prefer that it go forward, but uh, obviously I'm only one vote on this select board, so. Um, uh, I, I would say, Victor, I don't see anybody calling it frivolous. I, I think th the fact is we do not have a park at this point. Hmm? We do not have a park at this point. And, no, and, I realize that. And maybe it was a matter of timing of the, of you know, really, we get the, the cart before the horse, and that we're trying to name something we haven't even created yet. And and well, I, I don't see any of you uh, leaving us in, in the next year. And if, if we have a design and everything is moving forward, that's probably the appropriate time to. Well, it's a green space. Uh, <coughs> yes, that's true. Uh, just just. Uh, so what's what's the objection to naming the park now and then work with the design later on so why can't we do that we can so that's what he's saying he don't yeah. want it to get lost he doesn't want it if to get lost after a year or so that's a long time right uh, we've brought a lot of stuff back uh, at the time no. <laughs> because uh, some people work very hard on that uh, my yeah. plan stuff and I think we should move forward and that's my part. Pleasure of the board. Will it be lost if we let it get lost? Hmm? Would we be lost if we let it get lost? I'll, I'll always make sure that doesn't happen. But, um, well, I mean, I suppose what we could do is have a motion to declare our intention that, that would, we'd create a park there and name it after Stan Lazarus if, if, uh, if you'd like to. Uh, simply have a, a select board um, declare its intention and uh, proceed um, in taking whatever steps to, to carry this out. Um, Are you making a motion? Hmm? Are you making a motion? I'd be happy to. I'll second it. Uh, to that with that the select board um, declare its intention to, um, uh, to create that green space, which will be created as a result of the, uh, what, the downtown development um, uh, into a park uh, uh, named Lazarus Park, and that uh, uh, we would um, 
ask the design review board to um, perhaps begin and, and the uh, uh, we also the architectural review committee to consider uh, ways of accomplishing this architecturally. Can you get second? Huh? The, intention, the intention, yes. Okay. Comments on the on the motion. So I believe your motion is uh, that the select board uh, is providing guidance that they intend to name yeah. Lazarus Park and to incorporate anything in the design of the park that would help foster it being a recognition of the historic history that is uh, represented in that space. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Comments? Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Planning Commission, Jen. I believe you're going to go through the location for the Amtrak rail platform with us. <coughs> and I should introduce myself. I'm Barbara Saunders. I'm currently chair of the Planning Commission. Um, so I guess we're just um, here to um, present our recommendation to you. We went through a, a public process that included a, a survey, as you know, and um, two public meetings, and we developed a list of evaluation criteria. Um, we started with probably close to a dozen sites, winnowed, th winnowed them down to four really good options, and then evaluated those sites according to our evaluation criteria. And um, we're very happy to find that it all, when we looked at it, just, you know, subject, objectively, objectively, mm -hmm. objectively, <laughs> that it all panned out to be the same as the results from the survey. So that's always a good sign. Um, so we're recommending that site one on Middle Seymour Street um, is the preferred option. And um, the site um, on Seymour Street at the National Bank parking lot um, is a, a second option for consideration. Happy to share as many other details as you'd like. It was a long process, hard to know what detail to share. Any comments from the select board? Uh, we kind of gotten the read, read uh, packet along the way, mm -hmm. but I, mm -hmm. there may be some comments, uh, clarifications anybody would like before we uh, support that recommendation. Mike? I trust these are both, um, from a safety perspective, acceptable to both the freight and the passenger rail carrier. Yes, as, par as part of our process at the beginning, um, th we had conference calls with um, Vermont Rail, with Amtrak, with um, V-Trans mm -hmm. to make sure that we understood um, their needs. Mm -hmm. And then our consultant continued to communicate with them as time went on as they developed conceptual plans. Mm -hmm. And so from here, the conceptual plan for the preferred option that you select would go to V-Trans and they would develop final plans over the course of next year. <coughs> Um, we're hoping that they continue to engage the public in that process. Um, I'm happy to serve as the town's um, liaison in any sort of design committee that they put together. I think it'll be really important to continue to gather input from the neighborhood that will be impacted by the platform. Well, I think you did a good job on the process. I admit this wasn't my, my initially my first choice, but as I watched the way you went through the process, I, I see how you arrived here. So uh, you should all be commended on a, on a really good, solid effort. Thank you. Jen, I know that, um, yeah, the process was really good, and we we wondered about, or I did, you know, about um, an option that was between <coughs> this one and the National Bank of Middlebury site, and could you speak to that? You know, did you, what would you say about that? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so the hybrid site that came up the hybrid our, site. our second meeting, um, uh, People were talking about Site 1 and Site 2 at the National Bank parking lot, liked them both very well, and then um, I think it was Chris that actually suggested could we consider an option in between the two. Um, her idea was to put a platform in the area where Seymour Street bends in between um, County Tire and the National <coughs> Bank parking lot. Mm -hmm. um, so 
after that meeting, we, um, we went directly to our consultant, had them just kind of mock up what that would look like schematically, um, mm -hmm. show us on a, a drawing what that looks like to put a 300-foot platform at the required width in that space. And what we found is that the platform <coughs> would impinge um, on the sidewalk and partially in the street in that location um, based on their final plans that they have. Because mind you, in the final plans that, that VHB has, the sidewalk is continued in that area. As you're undergrounding the utilities, you're extending your sidewalk. So the final plans look a little different from what we see in the field today. Um, so impinged on the sidewalk. And then we had a robust conversation about it. We had the engineer on speakerphone, most mm -hmm. of the planning commission was there. Um, and we also decided that um, f it wasn't responsible to recommend an option that had zero parking spaces. Mm -hmm. There's no way there's not going to be some sort of long-term parking overnight. It might not be a lot. We know we're still trying to figure out what it is. Our consultant guesstimated, what, 12, 13 spaces? Yes, uh, based on other stations in Vermont. Um, right. He was figuring overnight parking between 12 and 13. Mm -hmm. And even though they could still um, park overnight in site number one, that would mean that they disembark on the other side of Seymour Street would need to walk with their little rolling suitcases underneath the overpass to get to the parking lot on... <coughs> On, um, on Middle Seymour, and that was just a really long way. Yeah, you, so you disembark with that hybrid option, the platform would be here, right along the side of the road. Dangerous cur curve, by the way. Um, they'd have to walk along here and then under the overpass to get to their long-term parking. We just didn't think that. Um, Is that the hybrid? I thought it was sliding the no. hybrid, no. other the way. Hybrid. Yeah, it would, be, it would be 300 feet within here. No. I thought the version that I was seeing was between, oh, okay, yes, you're right. Okay, so um, so we wouldn't be able to do parking on, um, what is that? Methodist Lane. Methodist Lane. Well, it's, Methodist Lane does not have parking on it now. I mean, it would, mm -hmm. it would require um, purchasing property um, to mm -hmm. create a parking lot. Um, we also looked at cost um, as one yeah. of our criteria, long-term costs um, for the, or ongoing costs for the, um, for each site. Mm -hmm. um, and that was one of the criteria we were asked to look at. And that one, uh, we never got through the whole process of um, doing the criteria on each of the, um, on that particular site, because we pretty much dismissed it after VHB said it was not viable. And they, again, they said it wasn't viable because it impinged on the sidewalk? That was the first and primary reason, but then, you know, as we discussed parking and safety considerations, parking. it didn't even make it into our top four. So okay. this is, we had, we had it down to four sites. This was raised, okay. you know, at a, at a public meeting. We gave it a fair shot looking at it, and it didn't, it didn't compete okay. with the four that were Okay, I just at. wanted to understand Thank that. Thank you for that. asking. Okay. Jen, question, uh, one of the emails that we got, uh, was talking about the, the uh, pedestrian connectivity to the downtown from the rail platform. Did you look at that? Uh, is that going to be feasible to have a, um, to get them up through the, the marble works some way? Yeah. So one of the one of the elements of that um, that site plan. Three. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. uh, for the selected yeah, site number planet, one, yeah. is that mm -hmm. we need to, we'd really like to create sidewalk connectivity right. between this platform into the marble works. Okay. And so that's what drives up the cost of the town share. Is so that was actually in, in the in the estimated town share yeah, we includes that. The oh, okay. Estimate. All right. Thank you. It mm -hmm. wasn't clear to me. Yeah. Okay. So. So the cost estimate does include connectivity into the marble works? Yep, but it's their best guess at what property acquisition would cost. Okay. Okay, so that's where a lot of that cost comes from. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. just, like, just like with all the sidewalk projects, there's going to be procuring of easements at least. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought Adam Franco's letter was really good in making that case, you know, for pedestrian, and so did others, you know, comment on that. And he also spoke to Printer's Alley and how we navigate Printer's Alley, which regardless of where the rail platform is, is something that we should be thinking about, too. And I thought that that plan seems sensible, and I hope that we look at it. I don't know if the rest of the board knows 
to what that, I'm that's speaking. That's not up for a discussion right now, though. I know. <laughs> I just wanted to make that comment that I thought it was worthy. I do hope you bring that up again during I our will. evaluation of the Printer's Alley plan, because this would be kind of mm -hmm. contingent on having a sidewalk up Printer's Alley. So. Exactly. No, it would be great. I think it'll be. Yeah. Have we considered a sidewalk mm -hmm. that connects to the bridge? Because there's the already the bridge? E there's already overnight parking below Storm Cafe. True. So yeah. people could potentially, if this lot got full, could potentially park there and then walk over. It's a very nice walk. Oh, the Mill Street parking lot. What is it? Talking Mill about the Mill Street mm -hmm. parking lot. Yes. Yeah. yes, that was brought up in several of our discussions, particularly okay. with the National Bank of Middlebury, um, who certainly didn't want us parking in their <laughs> parking spaces. We should mention that, just uh -huh. as a courtesy to them, the National Bank of Middlebury isn't, isn't fond of you choosing site number two, but we do submit that as a second option in terms of its popularity and just mm -hmm. how it all panned mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. And the thing to remember there is there's a pretty steep grade down from uh, the National Bank of Middlebury to the tracks, which um, has its own, everyone has its own issues, but that mm -hmm. was part of the issue yeah. on that mm -hmm. particular mm -hmm. site. Well, looking at your decision matrix, uh, you used a lot of criteria. Um, I'm supportive of it. Is, if the board is, I would entertain a motion. Yeah, one, one final question um, is, and I'm not going, I agree, I'm, I'm going to vote in, in support of this. Uh, the one thing I was wondering how, what thought may have been in there is, as I look at the plan for it, um, I see buses. And how, what were the thoughts on how they come in and then depart? And I'm thinking not specifically of an actor bus, but what we see in a lot of parts of the country is the mega buses. No, no, no. The integration of the train and the bus running as a train label. I mean, if you look in Oregon, for example, on their Cascade service, you have trains at some times, and other times it's a bus, but they stop at the same station points. <coughs> so I conceivably would love to see a situation where we don't have just a single train, but we have maybe the Vermont Transit bus running at a, a different time slot, so it would be an Amtrak Vermont bus that would follow the route and pick up those times when it's a little less density. So that's, that's a design issue to be worked out, um, and I'd like that to be considered into the package. I mean, that to me was the one strength of the Seymour Street location, but I'm not going to disagree with this. He went through a good process and did what we asked, so I'm supportive of it. We do have another alternative. Um, for this that I'll have on the hard drive if, in case you ever need it <laughs> where we were thinking about straightening out that little angle in Seymour Street mm -hmm. um, and when you do that you have a lot more room on the railroad track I side and there was room for an entire station. I remember seeing that concept early on yeah. yeah but it would take some time talking to the property owners to warm them up sure the idea. sure yeah. to me it's 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 to be considered but I have no reason to disagree with this we okay. give them naming rights if they give us a <laughs> 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 Would it be train station or bus stop? To, to, oh, that, wow. uh, to that point in infrastructure, I suggested that Gary Baker donate some land across from there, and we could, uh, <laughs> no we could name the station right across from there, Gary right, right. Baker train station. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say Jen has been in really regular communication with Gary Baker, and we're not quite able to straighten the road out yet. <laughs> Gotta find a big good he likes. Okay. Do you want to move it, Nick? No, go ahead. Okay. Um, well, then I'll move that we accept the Planning Commission's recommendation to select the Middle Seymour Street option as our preferred location for the Amtrak passenger rail platform and authorize our town manager, Kathleen, to communicate <coughs> that to v VTrans. Second. Uh, moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. I, I actually enjoyed watching the process mm -hmm. and I liked the, uh, the best part about it was uh, I think it was the first time we've used such a, a quality survey that was able to get so many, so many uh, of the community to respond to it. Mm -hmm. It was remarkable, and uh, the the uh, VHB people said they got more responses from this community than they have from much larger metropolitan areas. Yeah. So there was a lot of engagement, and it was all written by Jan. So. Yeah. 
Well, it was it was uh, effective and it did get people engaged. So thank you. It was a good process. Good. That's fine. Good job. Thanks. Uh, next uh, on our agenda is the Creek Road Next Steps. Uh, and uh, we, as, as uh, let the area clear a little bit here. <coughs> You're Peter. Hi, Peter. So Peter's here to talk to us uh, about uh, ideas on, on ways to uh, put together um, a similar type of uh, decision uh, matrix or you know, a way for us to look at our, all the work that's been done on Creek Road and it came out of our last uh, board meeting when we were discussing this that we really have a lot of things that we're looking at and we don't have a good way of looking at them all together as far as pros and cons. Mm -hmm. and, and so Kathleen had an idea um, with uh, uh, the, the infrastructure committee. She reached out to Peter DeGraff and, and Peter has, has given us a proposal to look at and I'll, I'll let you go through your proposal, I, Peter. I think you've done a pretty good job summarizing it. Um, I'd like to thank the town for, for considering me for this effort. Um, I, as I think all of you know, I've got a background in civil engineering. This is the type of work that I do. Um, and even though this isn't an engineering project, I think that'll, uh, my construction and engineering experience will help uh, guide this process forward. I think the town has done uh, a lot of good work. The pathways report was, uh, from what I've read of it so far is, is very thorough. Uh, but they presented a lot of options and some other options have come up since the pathways report um, so in meeting with kathleen and and dan um, my goal would be to just help you consolidate those bring them into a concise package and present them in a way so that you really can compare uh, each of the options on an equitable basis you're not going to recommend <laughs> <laughs> what we should do <laughs> We'll see. Like, <laughs> rank them? <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe out of Peter's work, uh, a, a clearer path will come. And, and uh, we have uh, uh, Heather, is, is, as the chair of the Infrastructure Committee, is supportive of, of this process, I believe, and, and is, is uh, mm -hmm. uh, we've, I've also received a, a note uh, from Susan, um, the former chair of the Infrastructure Committee, who also wrestled with this the same challenge on Creek Road for several years, and and uh, I think everyone who has been wrestling with this would love to see it laid out in a in a, a more digestible mm -hmm. manner, where that we can all be on the same page when we're talking about options. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I've seen this process work in other um, complex issues where there's varying levels of knowledge among each uh, what is. And as I looked around the table and we've had the discussions, I, I see that we all know we have to solve this, but we're all self-included, um, not, not sure of what that means and what it looks like. So what Peter's proposed to me is, is He's an engineer, but it's really it's an educational effort with engineering expertise, and I think that's what we need. So um, I, I, I like the way this is, this is, and this, I think, is going to help us. And, and as far as even the recommendations, well done. We will come to ranking order. Um, and, and so th those answers will emerge, but this is going to help us with that, um, get to that difficult point where we know we have to get to. So. I hope at the end of the process it'll be clear to everyone what the first choice is, <laughs> without having been through it yet. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, I, I believe it. I believe it will. At least we'll be a lot further along. So, okay. I think this is great. I'll make a motion to accept the consulting proposal from Peter DeGraff for evaluation of alternatives for addressing repair needs for Creek Road. 
at an estimated maximum cost of 5,500 subject to amendment with approval from the select board. Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you, Peter. We look forward to working with you. Thank you very much, and I appreciate being considered for it. Help clarify this for us. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, next is uh, some discussion on re renewable energy policy, and we're looking for uh, maybe s some clarification. And that uh, uh, subsequent to our approving the renewable energy policy at our October 9th meeting, uh, there were questions regarding how the policy should be applied that were raised in the infrastructure committee during discussions regarding our proposed projects to replace existing gas piping at police at the police department and the fire department facilities in order to convert from propane as a fuel source to natural gas in both of the decisions the committee has supported the interpretation that the policy was intended to apply only to purchases of new or replacement vehicles and equipment not to mid-life cycle upgrades or modifications of vehicles and equipment um, heather the infrastructure committee chair has requested the select board revisit the policy to determine whether clarifying language is in order and to that end a draft was included in our packet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, which basically says that it clarifies that it, it does not apply to the mid-life cycle upgrades or modifications. Um, I think that's mm -hmm. been our interpretation in our discussions on support of, of the uh, requests that have come before the board, but we have not uh, we have not put that into our policy, and I think it would make. Uh, if that is our intent, that would make Heather's job and the rest of the infrastructure uh, and department heads' job a, a lot clearer on when they need to to go out and seek other other options. So I'll open it up to the board. Mm -hmm. Thank you to Kathleen for helping get my idea onto paper and. I had kind of interpreted this policy in this way, but then realized that it wasn't really clear and we were wrestling with it. So um, the only other thing that w was, I was sort of mulling to was a uh, kind of date of, because of budget cycles, did we need to think about Incorporating and incorporating a date into when it became effective, also, but I don't know that that's as important as because we're kind of already doing it with the library boiler. Now we're we're already doing this work now with the library boiler that we need to consider replacement on. Um, so it may not be so necessary that a date of effectiveness be in place, and more just a clarification. Um, so in, in the instance of the fire department and their proposed conversion, that and the same with the police department too, we're, we're not changing the equipment, we're just changing the fuel. Um, and so there is some argument that, I, I, I don't know, it's, I just definitely have struggled with it some but we do have a 20-year-old boiler in the fire department that didn't get replaced as part of the um, revision, you know, the construction project there that at some point will need to be considered for replacement or whatever. And in that case, then, yes, the, I think this applies. And we need to look at as whatever options we can in that case. But anyway. Does that make sense? It does. Uh, you know, I, that actually, in fact, I think it put together really quite well because there's a difference between a mid-cycle conversion, which is what this is, versus something completely new that is not necessarily just a piece of heating equipment. It could be an extensive um, modification of duct work or humidification. It, it's a much more involved process. So I think this actually kind of addresses one of the difficulties I had endorsing the policy in the first place. So I appreciate you bringing this up. I think it's, um, it's very wise. 
So I do think that in the fire department <coughs> proposal, the, there was not a conversion in the 20-year-old boiler, bo yeah, boiler. It was mainly a conversion for the newer that's only five years old. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a piece of equipment that's still useful to us. So um, mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. I, I I struggle with how we you know there's benefits to the natural gas at this point cost planning budgeting um, and I'm getting off in the weeds a little I'm sorry but but on the other hand we still do need to wrestle with the energy and greenhouse global warming and all mm -hmm. that and how do we do it and and be respectful for department heads time and energy and so I also think it, it's, it's it's a I'm sorry Nick it's a it's a policy right and yes. we should revise it as we go forward and in a year if there's some evidence that we should make a change one way or another to this policy then I would totally support that so. yes oh, well there's also a logic to you know, new equipment is purpose-built design with these things already into it with the efficiencies and that's just the way the manufacturers are going for anything um, it gives us a chance to comparatively evaluate different products out there existing is a little more challenging actually it's a lot more challenging so there's a logic in implementing the policy and moving forward with it for the new equipment as we have let's see where the long term shakes out we may find it it, it we don't need this clause but at this point i think it makes perfectly good sense and would be say why is to put in I'm, I'm supportive of it in uh, it, especially in our initial stages of trying to do this I, I've intended to uh, I reached out to Ross early on and and I had some time but it's I've been out straight I haven't gotten back to him because he wasn't available but I think we also need to provide some guidance what are the what are the things that they should be looking at to compare as part of their <coughs> comparative cost estimate. We haven't given any guidance on that. And so it's up to each person to, you know, we're really dependent upon our, our department heads to, to make it up each time. And so I think we can provide a simple matrix, but I, uh, that, that they can help fill in where there's the initial costs and, you know, your, your routine maintenance costs and, cost the labor costs if there's labor differences um, various things but that's where I was looking to come up, come up with some sort of a matrix and brainstorm it with 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 Ross and get and get the energy committee to participate in it mm -hmm. um, just haven't gotten it done yet I'm very in favor of this because I think it does take a lot of time if you're going to do a full comparison and I think we need to be cognizant of the fact that we're asking a lot of the staff I mean we're you can see we're having some of our some of our sections coming forward some of our departments coming forward asking for more staffing because they don't have enough staff to do what they're doing now so I I would like to at least in its infant stage keep it to new purchases I would be very supportive of that mm -hmm. I don't agree I really don't. You know, I, I, I think that we've already vetted it enough. We do have enough direction for department heads. I think that Vermont Gas was very aggressive in pursuing our department heads. I'm not sure that they would have even been looking at a conversion without that aggressive marketing, you know, because they could have stayed with their fully functioning systems. I'm thinking in the case of the fire department. You know, and I, th I don't believe that natural gas prices are going to stay as low as they are right now. And I think that our board should be prepared for that. You know, so that's one thing. I don't know that you're going you're gonna to have these long-term cost savings. And I am concerned about the climate impact and everything that we're learning, especially about methane gas. And... And the reports we're hearing about global warming. Uh, uh, nope, I don't support it. So. I, th I think they're gonna, it's just, 
going in the wrong direction. I think if anything, even with midlife equipment, if we could see that there could be um, a reduction in fossil fuel use through the addition of some new equipment that comes on the market, that that's the direction we should be going in. Okay, I, I respect that you don't agree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think those two things can be independent of one another, though. Um, I think if, if you know, the, the question of converting the, the fire station um, or the police department, it's either yes or no, but either way, we're not. If we weren't converting to natural gas, everything would stay exactly the same. You know, it's not, we're not, we're not doing solar or natural gas. It's remain the way we are or convert to natural gas. And I think that's independent of this policy. I actually think that what you're proposing just clarifies the intent of the policy to start with. Um, having, I, I, was not, I, I was not on the committee when this started, but having sat in on the end of it, we were talking about equipment, you know, we were talking about hardware, um, you know, that said, I'm, I'm also not super excited about the natural gas. I think you're trading one problem for another problem, but to me that doesn't change the policy. Um, and I think that your wording just clarifies it for the department head so that they're not stressing about, you know, I, I think they got the impression that every single step of the way they had to go back and, and look from the beginning at all their options, and, and I don't think that that's what the policy intended. Um, it really is my understanding of it, and I did bump into Ross recently, <laughs> um, and this did go out to everyone on, on the committee. Um, so I don't know if everyone read it, but it went out to all of them. You know, we pointed out yeah. your changes, and I haven't heard anything back that this would be a problem. I, I really think this was the intention. There just wasn't that sort of clarifying statement that you've added in. So I don't have a problem with this. I, I do think the whole other natural gas thing, they're related, but I think we can deal with them separately. Mm -hmm. Anybody care to make a motion? Sure. I'll make a motion uh, to adopt the amended renewable energy policy as presented. Second. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Um, any other comments on it? Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Okay. With that, we will jump into budget drivers and the budget timeline. Okay. So uh, briefly. We're honored to have you all here at this meeting. So. <laughs> so briefly, the uh, Where is everybody? the the complete uh, budget uh, will be uh, posted online on Wednesday, December fifth. <laughs> Uh, to give you time to review it in advance of your Tuesday, December 11th and uh, December 18th meetings. I would note that on December 11th, your agenda is already quite full. Um, <coughs> so I'm thinking that at this point, maybe we focus one big budget workshop on the 18th and pretty much limit um, the agenda to that. Um, we already have Triangle Park on the 11th and a number of other things. Was everybody able to make the 18th? Mm -hmm. No, I'm sick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard from just about everyone that but they can do I the 18th. had it 18th. down already, so I wondered if we had already decided that or talked about we it. We already intended that. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, on the budget timeline. Okay. 
than on the major <coughs> drivers. So looking ahead, always wages and benefits are right at the top of our list. We have wages of about $3.3 million uh, with a 2% anticipated cost of living, which is included in our union contracts. Um, we would be looking at, it, along with merit increases and step increases, a change of $90,000. Um, benefits, uh, $1.4 million. Um, an increase of $60,000, uh, assuming that we change from the um, Vermont Health Connect to a new association plan, which you may have uh, heard of, uh, which has been available for um, health insurance. Um, so right there, you're looking at $150,000, which increase, which is about two cents on the tax rate. Um, we've already heard a request for a new position in the library. Uh, Jackie Sullivan and I are working on a proposal to bring to the personnel committee and to the um, select board for some additional assistance with grants administration and accounting. Um, stay tuned for more on that. Um, unclear at this point whether that would be a half-time position or a full-time position, but I've put a marker in there for a full-time position. Um, we've heard from the MCTV board that they're interested in uh, upgrading our audio and video equipment here in this room um, and would like to split the cost of that project with us. At this point, uh, they're getting updated figures, but we're carrying $8,000 as half of that cost um, in our budget. Capital improvements, the uh, Infrastructure Committee re reviewed and approved and recommended a $296,000 increase in capital improvements. They're also going to be uh, reviewing the possibility of recommending local option tax surplus uh, to cover that amount as it did last year. Um, but that, they'll be doing that on the 13th of November. Property and casualty insurance. December. December. Yes, December. December. Yeah. Uh, what did you find in November? <laughs> oh, go ahead. <laughs> we might have already decided, <laughs> but we talked about it now. There was lots of conversation. Yes, um, there's always lots of conversation. So just briefly, um, on the surplus discussion, $300,000, between three and $400,000 is the annual surplus we're experiencing on the Cross Street Bridge local option tax. Um, we would not have to touch the existing balance of, two point, of about $2.3 million uh, in the Cross Street Bridge Fund uh, under that <coughs> proposal. Um, property and casualty insurance budgeting a 5% uh, increase for now. Um, and the good news is that it looks at this point as if our FY19 if FY18 fund balance is sufficient to allow us to apply $150,000 again uh, to reduce the tax rate, or $150,000. So looking at all of these preliminary uh, major drivers, once again, we're looking at an increase of at least four cents um, at, in our first go at the budget. So I'd just like to put those out before you, you before we discover, before we get into the nitty gritty details so that you keep the end in mind uh, as we go forward. Very helpful. Yeah. Kathleen, when you say the uh, fund balance is sufficient, what, is, what does that look like? Uh, the general fund balance is an estimated $700,000 and we like to keep 5% uh, of our $10 million budget um, as a rainy day fund. So, what were you thinking? No, I just wanted to know what that was. Okay. Plus, I think it's also beneficial. I, I wanted to hear it again just so I remembered what it was, but I think it's also beneficial for those who are newer to hear it as well. Actually, for all of us to hear it. Mm -hmm. So that, that's kind of what I was thinking. So we're gearing up for a major 18th of December workshop. Yep. All right. That's okay, next, uh, we're going to appoint the town representative. 
Kathleen Ramsey. So uh, ACDC, the Anderson County Economic Development Corporation Board, uh, the town uh, has a, a director spot. Uh, Kathleen has served on that, that uh, in that role. Uh, was We were looking to free some of Kathleen's time up. Uh, we advertised it and we got no response. Is that correct, Kathleen? That's right. And Kathleen has said she would be willing to do it um, for okay. if a board member would like to do it. I'll make a motion. To appoint town manager Kathleen Ramsey as Middlebury's representative to the Addison County Economic Development Corporation Board of Directors. I just heard five seconds. <laughs> Do we have a second? I'll second. Moved and seconded. Can I? Comments? Yes. So the lady, the combination, the community barn ventures, uh -huh. women, that Mar you know. Mary and Stacy. Yes. Yeah, so which one is not on the Economic Health Committee? Stacy is Stacey. Stacey. So did we ask her specifically if she might be interested? I mean, we put a call out, but sometimes people need an invitation. Okay. Bef could we? See. Unless, Kathleen, you're still seeing benefit to being connected with that group of folks. I mean, I'm, fi I'm fine with, with yeah. voting to mm -hmm. Kathleen there, but I just wondered if, mm -hmm. well, if we did every, every, if we exhausted every possibility, mm -hmm. maybe not. We did, uh, we did post it and we did. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I'd be happy to follow up on that and report back. Um, but if the board would make this appointment for now, the annual meeting of the ACEDC is the first Friday in December. Uh, I could sit on the board until a replacement is found. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I certainly will reach out to good. Stacey. That's, well, that's actually a good, good I, idea. That's, that's a good idea. I didn't, I didn't actually see the call. So it's possible that there are people, anyway. Good, good call. I always got to throw them in the okay, I, I, so I tried to make it as large and as inviting as I could. <laughs> <laughs> I, I imagine you did, which is why it's surprising that not people were interested. So all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you, Kathleen. All right. Yeah. She, she definitely carries the water all the time. Okay. Uh, we need to approve updated municipal policies and codes for the Lindale Mobile Home Park septic planning project to replace the outdated municipal policies and codes approved at our August 14th meeting. Kathleen, can you help me with that? <laughs> sure. Uh, being good grant recipients, we got right on adopting the municipal policies and codes um, for the Lindale Mobile Home Park septic planning project. And in the meantime, uh, we submitted those and they said, oh no, these are outdated. We have new ones uh, dated in November. They've added some whistleblower protections um, as uh, shown on page seven of the proposed policy. Oh, okay. All yeah, right. The rest of the document is unchanged. I'll make a motion to approve the Vermont Community Development Program updated municipal policies and codes for grant funding for the Lindale Mobile Home Park septic planning project. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Check warrants. So I would motion to approve the total expenditures in the amount of $4,422,602.64. Of which, wow. yeah. <laughs> um, some big. of that was school that came in. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, of which $4,324,657.91 is for accounts payable and $97,944.73 is for payroll for the pay period of November 14th, 2018 through November 27th, 2018. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Town manager's report. Briefly, uh, following up on comments made earlier, December 5th, 
is the is another public opportunity for land uh, for input on the landscape designs for Triangle Park, uh, 7 p.m. here at the town offices um, for Triangle Park at the corner of Main Street and Merchants Row, and Printers Alley near the National Bank of Middlebury. Uh, Comments from this session will be summarized for the December 11th Select Board meeting when the board will make its final decision regarding the landscape designs. <coughs> That's all I have. That's all you have. All right. Board member concerns for HUD. All set. All set. Lindsay? I'm okay. Okay. Lauren? It was really great to see robust attendance tonight, and I don't know if anybody that came tonight was looking at the possibility of select board, but I think it's, it's, it's a good opportunity to think about it now um, as we're approaching the end of the year and entering our budget season. So, um, and even if you're not, you know, it's a good time to be paying attention as we are planning our budget for the next round. So I just wanted to welcome people to come back you know for our next discussions and to consider serving on the board mm, good comment okay. Nick. No. Victor. Heather. all right well I hope everybody had a very happy Thanksgiving and is enjoying you're know, all enjoying the snow and uh, we're gonna get out early I know we didn't start looking like we were gonna get out early but uh, the meeting picked up steam, I guess. So I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Moved. Second. Moved and second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, all right. So adjourned at 837. <laughs>